Caritas y Caballeros, we give you the fiesta at San Diego. California's traditional hospitality, handed down for generations from the gracious days of the Spanish dons, is beckoning millions of guests to San Diego's California Pacific International Exposition. From every part of the Americas, North, South, and Central, they come. And like the hostess of old, San Diego has outdone herself to provide gaiety, cultural adventures, fine music, beautiful architecture, modern industrial displays, and plenty of joyous, carefree fun. The lovely architecture of 16th century Spain rears its slender white spires and delicate traceries in sharp relief against summer skies. The dark-eyed flower girl, who bewitches us into buying an exotic tropical bloom for our buttonhole, says, Muchos gracias, senor. And her merry smile costs us nothing. Balboa Park, scene of the exposition, boasts a thousand graceful trees, and set like a white gem in a deep green mounting, is one of the largest of the fair exhibits. In this building, a brief cross-section of the Ford plant at Dearborn tells the story of raw materials and their progress from earth to automobile. Trained lecturers explain each exhibit, telling, for instance, how soybeans are processed to make parts for Ford cars. Henry Ford, you know, believes that a great deal of the automobile of the future will be grown on the farms of America. Industry has its fireworks too, and brilliant displays mark the path of the electric arc welding machine, a device that contributes strength and safety to modern automobiles. The heart of any car is its engine, so one exhibit shows this miracle of engineering. Two mechanics prove that it takes only a few minutes to assemble and take down the famous V8 engine. Boys representing the Henry Ford Trade School have an interesting exhibit at San Diego. Remember the stories about medieval torture chambers that made your blood run cold? On the rack, many parts are subjected in a few hours to the same punishing wear and strain they undergo in months of hard driving. Yes, sir. Parts for a modern automobile have to be able to take it and come up with a bounce like these valve seat inserts. Oh, there's one that didn't quite make it. Even Ford's safety glass must prove its worth when a falling steel ball strikes it with a crushing blow that would demolish ordinary plate glass. At Ford plants, there's many a penny saved in a big byproduct department utilizing everything. They're even trying to use the whoosh you hear as the Fords go by. A marvelous working model at the fair shows how this byproducts department functions. Strolling around this fair certainly takes it out of you, doesn't it? Let's see, can't we find some place to rest? Ah, yes, here's one. And we're on the beautiful Ford verandas overlooking San Diego and the blue waters of the bay. Isn't this perfect? Hello, here's a young Balboa. He got his fare ticket on condition that he'd keep an eye on his young brother Tommy. Hello, will you look at that? Now, who would ever have thought of using this beautiful V8 fountain in the Ford Building patio for a rendezvous with an ice cream cone? Well, a lot of folks agree with this youngster, and the Ford patio is one of the most popular places for relaxation on the fairgrounds. There is music, grateful shade, and inviting benches. Outside in the great Ford Bowl, symphony orchestras, choirs, and choruses give series of concerts, and artists present recitals daily on the new electronic organ. Let's take a ride around the Ford roads of the Pacific just outside the building. Hop into a 1935 car, and we're off. Here's the old plank road from California across the desert to Yuma, Arizona. Then Japan's Tokaido, which figures in that country's fable and song almost as importantly as Fujiyama, the sacred mountain. 
Panama's Gold Road comes next, literally paved with the bones of men and beasts who broke its weary miles through steaming jungles. The old Spanish trail is so old that history fails to record its actual beginning. We haven't time to see all the roads, but they're not the half of it. Near the center of the fair stands the great house of Pacific relations, where representatives of more than 30 nations hold open house. Almost as if we found them strolling along Japan's Tokaido, we meet these two charming maids who shyly say their names are Tsuruyo, which means the stork, and Fuji, which means mountain. The land of the midnight sun sends greetings and best wishes together with the charming costumes of Norway. And Yugoslavia's daughters proudly display their skill in needlecraft. A brilliant field of color, shot through with greens, yellows, and blues, marks the house of Central American nations. Even the North and South Polar regions are represented. For Klondike, the big husky on the left, has traveled with Admiral Byrd to the top and bottom of the earth. Meanwhile, this well-known citizen of Little America has found time to raise a family. And now for a trip back to the 15th century to see the lads and lasses of merry old England dance upon the village green. Gracious Queen Elizabeth looks on to applaud the measures set to a tune piped on an ancient flute mellowed by four centuries of good British puffing. In the Indian village, we get a glimpse of pueblos, feathers and war paint that take us back centuries in the history of these great peoples. The braves like to show their prowess in the dance, but the squaws are more dignified. Maybe they can't afford to get all tired out. After all, they've got to get dinner at eight and put the papoozles to bed. Sure enough, the old sod is represented in this League of Nations, and it's a grand old jig that you're after a seeing now. A long journey, and a quick one, brings us to Spain's bright skies, where Castilian dancers do the dance of El Toro, dance of the bull to you. What's that hubbub? My gracious, it's the midway, and what a midway! What a riot of color and noise! There's everything here that you've ever seen, and some more that you haven't. Come on along to the Midway. Never mind how old you are. You'll be ten years younger by the time we get through. Yippee! We're off for Gold Gulch, where the days of 49 live again. And yes, sir, he's found something. There's gold in them thar hills, partner. But what's this? Red flannels in California? This chap is getting ready for some of California's unusual weather. Before we leave, meet Soapy Smith and his pet coyote. That's Soapy on your left, with a hat on. Well, it's time to get on to the more serious business of this fair. The Palace of Education houses many important exhibits, but out in the playground behind the building, Mary Lou remains totally unimpressed by pedagogic authority. Go on, Mary Lou. Go on, paint some more. Ah, that's a good girl. Well, 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 here's our old friend Tommy with the ice cream cone. And he still has to put in a few more licks. No wonder these youngsters try to make everything at the fair last as long as possible. There's never been anything just like it before and may never be again, for it combines a nostalgic old world charm and color with the newest in this hustling modern world of ours. Here is a vacation opportunity such as you may never find again. Drive through the national parks and scenic wonders of the far west to this sparkling colorful fiesta at San Diego, an exposition that is a dedication to California's yesterday, today, and tomorrow and a toast to the continuation of an American epic on the Pacific coast that will be written large in the history of the nation as the years march on. <laughs>